he offended three musketeers. Milady decided to have some poisoned wine delivered to D'Artagnan compliments of the three musketeers. D'Artagnan and the musketeers tracked her down, accused her of her many crimes. Alexander Dumas was a French writer. His works have been translated into many languages and he is one of the most widely read French authors. Prolific in several genres, Dumas began his career by writing plays, which were successfully produced from the first. He also wrote numerous magazine articles and travel books. His published works totaled 100,000 pages. In the 1840s, Dumas founded the Théâtre Historique in Paris. Now, let's get started. D'Artagnan, a poor but noble young man from Gascony, left his home to make his fortune in Paris. He was carrying a letter of introduction to his father's friend, Monsieur de Travel, captain of the King's Musketeers. On the way to Paris, D'Artagnan's impulsive nature got him into trouble. He was beaten and the letter of introduction was taken from him. In Paris, he nevertheless was granted an interview with Monsieur de Travel, and was promised acceptance in the Royal Academy free of charge, where he could learn fencing, riding, and good manners. Later, with experience, D'Artagnan was able to expect to become a musketeer. While Travel was writing a new letter of introduction, D'Artagnan glanced out the window and, by accident, saw the person who had robbed him. He ran after him. And while pursuing him, he offended three musketeers. First, he collided with Athos, re-injuring Athos's wounded shoulder. Then he jostled Porthos and revealed a partly counterfeit golden shoulder belt that he was wearing. And finally, he offended Aramis by ungallantly and unintentionally bringing attention to a lady's handkerchief. He was challenged to a duel by each of the musketeers. After he met the musketeers and began dueling with Athos, they were all threatened with arrest by the dreaded cardinal's guards because of a law against dueling. D'Artagnan joined forces with the musketeers and helped drive the cardinal's men away. Thus, almost immediately after his arrival in Paris, D'Artagnan became an intimate friend of the three musketeers. One day, D'Artagnan's elderly landlord, Bonaccio, came to ask him for help. The landlord's young wife, Constance, had been kidnapped, probably by the cardinal's men. Because she was the queen's linen maid and knew many of the queen's secrets, secrets which the cardinal desperately wanted revealed so that he could discredit the queen, who earlier had rejected his romantic advances. D'Artagnan was able to rescue Madame Bonaccio from her abductors and, while doing so, fell in love with her. Later, when he inadvertently saw her cross a bridge with a strange man, he stoked them and discovered that the man was an English nobleman, the Duke of Buckingham. The Queen's secret lover, being an Englishman, the man was also an enemy of France. That night, the queen gave the duke an elegant gift of twelve diamond tags in a rosewood box. When the cardinal, through his extended and vast network of spies, one of whom was among the queen's ladies-in-waiting, discovered that the queen had given Buckingham the diamond tags, he asked the king to give a fabulous ball and demanded that the queen wore the king's gift to her, the twelve diamond tags. The queen was terrified when she learned about the ball and heard her husband order her to wear the diamond tags. She knew very well that they were in London, in the possession of the Duke of Buckingham. Meanwhile, the cardinal sent one of his spies, the elegant and beautiful milady, to London. He instructed her to dance with the duke, snip off at least two of the diamond tags, and return them to the cardinal so that he could use them in a blackmail scheme. Ready to help the queen regain the diamond tags, whatever the cost, Constance Bonaccio pleaded with D'Artagnan to undertake the dangerous trip to London, in order to retrieve the diamond tags from the duke before the ball and thereby save the queen's reputation. D'Artagnan readily accepted Constance's request, and accompanied by the three musketeers, he began the hazardous trip to London. 
On the way, they were continually ambushed by the cardinal's spies. And one by one, the musketeers were foiled from accompanying D'Artagnan to London. When D'Artagnan reached London, he reported the situation to Buckingham, who discovered in horror that two of the tags were missing. Immediately, he called in his personal jeweler, and instructed him to work furiously in order to make exact copies. He gave the copies to D'Artagnan, along with the remaining ten tags, and a superb, prearranged series of horses. That would have taken D'Artagnan from London to Paris in twelve hours. Thus, the Queen was able to appear in what seemed to be all twelve of the diamond tags. To the utter astonishment of the Cardinal. For D'Artagnan's heroic efforts, the Queen secretly presented him with a large, magnificent diamond ring. After agreeing to a rendezvous with Constance, D'Artagnan was told that it was dangerous to remain in Paris. The Cardinal knew everything that happened in Paris. It wouldn't be been long, before he learned about D'Artagnan's role in the diamond tag escapade. D'Artagnan therefore decided that this would have been a good time to discover what had happened to his musketeer friends. He returned to each of the places where had left them, and finding them all safe, they returned to Paris, only to discover that they must buy equipment for the king's next military maneuver. The Siege of La Rochelle. Each of the musketeers must have found some way of getting money, something they were always short of. While pondering how to get some cash, D'Artagnan saw Milady by accident and was overwhelmed by her beauty. He followed her and tried to protect her from a bothersome man, who turned out to be her brother-in-law. The brother-in-law challenged D'Artagnan to a duel and they fought. D'Artagnan overpowered him, but spared his life. In appreciation for his life, the brother-in-law, Lord de Winter, introduced D'Artagnan to Milady, Lady de Winter. Meanwhile, Milady's maid saw D'Artagnan and fell in love with him, and later she told him that Milady was madly in love with Count de Wards, the man whom D'Artagnan had wounded just before sailing to London. She also gave D'Artagnan a love note which Milady had written to de Wards. D'Artagnan was so furious that he forged de Wards' signature on a return letter to Milady, arranging a dark, nighttime rendezvous with Milady. While she thought that she was making love to de Wards, D'Artagnan who made himself as Wards would have been making passionate love to her. The plan worked, and afterward Milady was so satisfied that she gave D'Artagnan an elegant sapphire ring surrounded with diamonds, promising to have that stupid D'Artagnan killed for having wounded de Wards, the man she thought she'd been making love to in the darkness. Later, D'Artagnan was furious, and, in order to get revenge against her, he answered another love note of hers to de Wards, signing de Wards' name under a flippant reminder that Milady had to wait her turn. He met Milady in person and saw how she felt about the letter. Milady was so incensed about the letter that she asked D'Artagnan to kill de Wards. And as prepayment, she went to bed with him. D'Artagnan was so enamored by Milady's loveliness that he impulsively revealed that this was not the first time that he had made love to her. Earlier, when she thought that she had been making love in the dark to de Wards, she hadn't. D'Artagnan had been in bed with her. Milady reared up and tried to kill D'Artagnan and as they scuffled, her nightgown was torn and D'Artagnan saw the mark of a convict branded on one of her shoulders. The discovery of this secret was so terrible that Milady vowed that D'Artagnan would die. By a stroke of good fortune, however, and some help from Kitty, D'Artagnan escaped. Relating the adventure to Athos later, the two men discovered that Milady was Athos's wife, a woman whom he thought he hanged after he discovered that she was a branded criminal. Athos and D'Artagnan decided to sell Milady's tainted ring, which originally belonged to Athos's family, and now they were both able to buy their equipment for the siege of La Rochelle. Meantime, Porthos had obtained his equipment from his aging, 
miserly mistress, and Aramis had obtained his equipment from his beloved friend, Madame de Chevreuse. Before D'Artagnan and the musketeers left in their separate regiments for the siege, the king became ill, and D'Artagnan's group moved out first, leaving the musketeers behind for the time being to await the king. D'Artagnan was lonesome for his friends and, one day, he was fired at by two of Milady's hired assassins. When this attempt failed, Milady decided to have some poisoned wine delivered to D'Artagnan compliments of, the three musketeers. D'Artagnan did not realize that the wine was poisoned. And he was so busy talking that he failed to drink the wine immediately. Instead, another soldier drank the wine, and fell dead. Meanwhile, the three musketeers were enjoying their leisure time, drinking and joking, and, by chance, they met the cardinal, who was going to a meeting with Milady, who was staying at the inn which the musketeers had just left. The musketeers accompanied the cardinal and listened through a broken stovepipe to the conversation. Milady, they learned, was going to London to make sure that the Duke of Buckingham was killed. In return, the cardinal would take revenge against D'Artagnan. The musketeers immediately decided on a plan to warn D'Artagnan and Buckingham. Thus, when Milady arrived in England, she was taken prisoner by her brother-in-law, De Winter. However, she cleverly corrupted her jailer, convinced him, a religious Puritan fanatic, that Buckingham deserved to be put to death, and he obeyed her. She then escaped to France, where she was determined to complete her revenge against D'Artagnan. She went to the convent where the queen had placed Constance Bonaccio, D'Artagnan's beloved, for protection, and their milady won the young girl's confidence. Precisely when D'Artagnan and the musketeers arrived to rescue Constance, Milady poisoned her and escaped. D'Artagnan and the musketeers tracked her down, accused her of her many crimes, and executed her. When the entire story was revealed later to the cardinal, he was horrified at the extent of Milady's evil web of death, and he was extremely impressed with D'Artagnan's laudable actions. Consequently, he wrote out a commission for D'Artagnan to become a lieutenant in the king's musketeers. After offering the commission to Athos, Porthos, and Aramis and being refused by all three, D'Artagnan accepted the prestigious commission at the early age of 21. Please subscribe to my channel. We're gonna show you world masterpieces in about 15 minutes with manga. Manga is Japanese style comics that is easy for everyone to understand. We're sure that you can grasp the context shortly. See you next time.